first. You gotta crack yeah, the Coke gotta, Zero. I'm having... I don't even know if this is wine. It's just... It's good. It looks like a... It looks like a cider, kind of. It looks like a... It's called... Uh, uh, it's Stella Rosa. Oh, some, yeah. Uh, like Stella Berry. It's really good. I don't know what to call cool. it. But yeah, I mean, we're on right now. We're recording. This is a part of the episode. Everyone just it wasted is, like 15 seconds of their time listening to us talk about drinks. Uh, let's just go for I'm it. sure you'll... Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to Color Break, your third favorite comic book podcast. We got a pack one for you guys today. Just energy. me and Christian. Just me and Christian. Uh, I am your host, as always, Cody Collects, and I'm here with. The mustachioed one. We've got Christian. Yeah. I'm also Christian as always. Dude, yeah. I got the energy, guys. Christian's got the low energy. No, I'm um, good. I'm, I'm here. It's just... He's good. He's good, I'm, guys. I'm high energy, gotta, dude. <laughs> listen, we got a packed episode. We're going to be talking about how we both read comics. We're going to be talking about some recent single issues that Christian and I have been enjoying. We're also going to be talking about um, Distillery's latest output gone by jock yeah and then we're gonna be talking about the dc comic uh dc compact comic line because i think it's pretty interesting yeah which i know so nothing Pacho. about <laughs> mm. dude i'll fill you in i'll fill everybody in dude i, I made sure not to uh, research so we're good nice yeah dude all right well you know uh thank you guys for for tuning in to color break this is episode check my notes here 32 wow the, the big, big three two <laughs> Um, I don't know. Where do you want to start, dude? You know what? Let's start Listen, by you're... pointing our listeners and viewers to the question down below. Like I said, we're going to be talking about how Chris and I read comic books, but we want to hear from you guys. Um, so if you're on Spotify, scroll down a little bit. All right. You'll see a question. You'll see a poll. Answer the poll if you want. But the question we're going to be asking you guys in this episode is how do you read comics? Um, so be sure to answer that on Spotify. Or if you're listening on YouTube, look at the top comment, dude. Which, like, we, by the way, sure we know you guys next episode. we know it's like a fairly like open ended question, but like I think after we talk about it, you know, you'll understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think it's I think it's a little interesting because everybody must read comics differently. I, um, I think you so yeah, hate how I read comics, unique. though. <laughs> you might you might hate how I read comics. So this will be a fun conversation. Um. You know what, dude? Let's start with that, man. Okay. Because this is a topic that we've been wanting to cover for a long time. Um, we thought it was time, guys. The comic book podcast is finally going to talk yeah. about how we read comics. Lay it on me, Christian. Oh, you want me to go first? Uh, but you got to left... paint the picture, dude. Paint the picture. I want it from the start. Left to right, first of all. Um <laughs> that's how i usually go unless it's like greg capullo's batman where like it was like a fucking spiral um yeah left to right mm. but now to be serious um it really de <laughs> it really depends uh and i will say i read mostly at work right now um right unless it's like a really some books i read outside of the comic shop yeah you were you were saying you said that before where um you know you'll you'll hop out you know new comic book day you'll sit down in your car <laughs> And you're yeah. like, there's two or three issues you got to read for you yeah, to get home. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Tiff gotcha. Sadarsky's Batman, Poison Ivy, and then, honestly, right now, Transformers is doing that for me, which we'll get into later. But Transformers was a book that I was like, I cannot go home without knowing what happens. Um, but yeah, uh, mostly at work. Uh, I work at a call center. Um, and in between calls, I'll be reading a book. Sometimes, you know, on break. But it really depends. I, I have like a, a way of doing it. I think it depends on what type of book it is. Omnis are different. Single issues are different. Uh, if we go for right. single issues, which I think you might do as well, I put like, I grab a stack. And like some of them mm -hmm. I leave on the side. Like I don't I don't feel like reading this right now. And then I get really backed up with those. Um, but most of them I put in a stack. And what I'll do is I'll grab my, my top three and I'll put them at the bottom. And it's like a rule. I cannot get to those until I get rid of the other ones. Right. That way I'm forcing myself to read two. Like, 
good comics that I'm excited about, but not as excited as like let's say a Batman. Um, and then Omnis, Omnis are things that like I mean I I read an Omni in two days, maybe a day. Yeah, dude, uh-huh. you you kill Omnis. You you kind of shred Omnis. I, I've been chipping away at the Superman one. It's been taking me like a month and a half. You just destroy Omnis, dude. Uh, yeah, I think the fastest Omni I read was a work shift, which is like mm-hmm. eight hours, but like working. But yeah, I feel like I, I like reading Omnis because it's like if it's mind you, some Omnis take me longer. Like New X Men is really kicking my ass right now. I'm taking breaks and shit, but like. An yeah. Omni like Scott Snyder's Batman or like which one was the most recent one that I really tore through? Immortal Hulk. It's one of those things where like it's the story is so compelling that I just cannot put it down. And right. like I have to finish it. And then I don't know, Omni's like I never thought I'd be reading an Omni, honestly. I was like a single issue boy. That was my dream. And then Ultimate Sp- what was it? Ultimate Spider Man or Flash that was my first one. It just they consume my life, and honestly, I could like get rid of a bunch of single issues and replace them with omnis. I might do that for they're releasing Thor by Donny Cates and an omni. Hmm. Because that's, that's a good that'd be book. cool. That's a really good book. Um, I know towards the end, it got like a little, you know, whatever he left, but but dude, I, those first couple arcs, bro, and omni, that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, sure. that's gonna be a really good, book. and it's like it's the first series I followed like truly followed mm. so it's it has a special place in my heart i need to get it and uh yeah i barely reread books which is funny but i think rereading that will be interesting and as far as traits traits i struggle with a lot i don't know if you struggle with traits like if it's a really short trait those like i i know it's very limited and like i just need to buy another book Wait, less like a single issue. I know that the thing is like, oh my god, I need to wait a month. It's kind of cool, but for a trade, it's like it doesn't get me as as quick. It, it takes me longer to read a trade. And I will say, there's some trades that I've had in my at my desk at work, just sitting there for months. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, that, um, I mean, any questions? You you can ask me questions about this. Yeah, I guess. I guess the only question I would have for you, right? Um, so it sounds like you just pick up like whatever you're in the mood to read, right? Like there's no yeah. system for it. Like if you're more into single issues that day, you'll be single issues. If you're Omni, you're being there's, Omni. Yeah, that Thursdays day. are normally like my single issue day. Unless I have like a lot of single issues, then like I can extend that. But Thursdays right. are normally my day where it's like I get to work and I'm like excited. <laughs> gotcha. And really like I'm telling you, if you have a job where you have downtime, and you like it doesn't interrupt the way you work. Comics will save you a bunch, you know, because especially this month at my job, it's been really slow. And like, just having something to do in between calls that's like productive, at least for like my brain, is really nice. Yeah. So like, you know, kind of uh, dipping into how I read comics or whatever um, during during the workday when I have like those five minutes where in theory, I probably should be picking up a single issue. Um, it's it's tough because I feel like a lot of the times I might end up just going on my phone, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, which, it's definitely which I that do mindset, as well. You got to snap out of it and do something productive, like you say. You know what I mean? Which I do as well. I, I, I have made it a point to not send you TikToks ever. Um, <laughs> because I know that if I send you one TikTok, you're going to get 99 TikToks. And like that's not a joke. I have a screenshot from my friend that he sent me that it was like ninety nine plus on our chat. Right. So like, <laughs> I I really like I really try to like oh my god I made it a point like I'm only gonna send Cody a TikTok if it's like if it's something that's like so you that I cannot ignore it. Like if I see yeah yeah if yeah, I see yeah, Weezer in there it's like okay I have to send it or if it's something like oh this could be good for the color break. But like, right nah. it's usually helpful stuff or like hit you know tips or like editing stuff or whatever yeah. so uh yeah you definitely don't spam me i got some uh friends or maybe even a girlfriend that likes to uh tiktok spam but i anyway i'm a menace but not but um uh, but it's i will say like it's a struggle sometimes like picking up the phone just like you watch one tiktok or you go on twitter and you're like ah, i'll just do this for a minute and you'll get lost twitter's the big one yeah 
Twitter is a really big one, but like I try to stick to my comics, you know. Yep, that makes sense, dude. I think you you are very productive in terms of reading comics. You doesn't sound like you're too far behind in terms of like single issues. It's I will say I'm I'm far behind in some series, you know. Like yeah, there's some of them like I will let you know right now. Superman, I'm behind on. Guardians of the yep. Galaxy, I'm like three issues behind on. Soup, uh, which one was the other one? Uh, most of the DC ones I'm behind, but it's like a choice. It's like I'm letting them pile up because sometimes it is really nice if it's a slow yeah. day at work to like read ten single issues of the same story, and it right. feels like rewarding. Yep. I feel that for sure. Yeah, dude. I think uh yeah, you there's a lot of good stuff there, dude. I think you're a you're a successful uh comic reader. You got a system down that works for you, dude. Yeah. Uh my want, system is kind of crazy. I want I want to know uh, I was going to ask right now. I know you you also do the pile. I do I the know, pile. Big fan of the do, pile. I know you do the pile and the pile is a good way. Yeah. So so I, I actually uh, I just recorded a uh, like a short whatever TikTok video yesterday um, where I'm gonna be talking about my my November TBR. Um, so I got it on the side here, and I'll use this as a as a visual aid, a visual example. Um, so you see there, right? You yeah. got some single issues, and that's I, I'm cover, guessing that's Immortal Hulk, a trade, and an Omni. Nah, this is Superman. <laughs> um, so. So yeah, typically I'll have at the very top, this is like my monthly TBR. This usually doesn't include, um, it doesn't include single issues that uh, are ongoing, right? Yeah, like the weekly. The, the single issues on the top will be like a full series that I'm behind on. So Love Everlasting, I'm like five issues behind. I don't even know where um, I'm that one. But, but you know, it, it's one of those things that I, I just keep like this stack of different formats um, and it's kind of allowed me to so it sounds like sort of what what um how you go, get through your stack where it's like you know if I'm in mood for an omni Superman omni pick it up a uh, couple single issues just depending on how much time I have to read or whatever yeah. um, you know I got I always try to have like a hardcover on deck a trade on deck and an omni on deck um, so that's what we got so we got the Superman omni. I'm going to be trying to read uh, Superman Birthright Deluxe Edition sometime in November. I've heard good things. Um, so some, something that's a little different uh, compared to what you said, uh, you use that system where you have like your most anticipated reads and you put them at the bottom. Yes. So I, I tried that for a very long time um, and it was working a little bit, but I kind of felt like the first, like if you organize it in that way of like, what you're least excited to read all the way down to like your most anticipated read. It just felt like, like homework getting through that first uh, couple issues. So I've, I've actually flipped it. Um, I found that for me, it's a little better if I have my most anticipated reads at the top, I blow right through them. I'm like five issues deep. I'm like, I'm on a run right now. You know what I'm saying? And then I can, it helps me get in like the reading mood. If I'm first start out reading my reading session with something that I'm looking forward to reading. That's pretty smart. Um, yeah, so so it's helped me. I, I don't know. Maybe if um, some listeners or viewers have issues keeping on top of their uh, single issues, maybe try that out. I mean, um, yeah, you, you know, know whichever tr- whichever way try, works for you. But try both of them. Try my my version yep. and Cody's version. Do it like for like yep. a straight six months, and then let us know which one is better. <laughs> yeah, true. Do some do some like scientific method and. Do some experimentation, get a hypothesis going. We'll check Let back with you. We'll check back with you on uh on May tenth, and you just let us know. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things where it's like, so also I guess this is um talking to a lady at my LCS, Julie. She does the same thing you do, where um, you know she's at, she works at the LCS, right? Yeah. If it's if it's a slow day, she has a pile of of single issues. Usually that Wednesday that she's getting through. Um, cause she reads everything. She tries yeah. to stay up to date on everything just in case anyone comes in and has questions about stuff, but she does that same thing where she has her most anticipated reads at the bottom and I don't know, it doesn't work for me, but it might work for you guys. So definitely try it out. We'll, we'll get those scientists on, on it. Don't worry. Dude, something else I, I we got to touch on that, right? Let's go. Because this is like the act of, of reading, right? But I also want to talk a little bit about 
like the setting in which you read, right? So I'll just I'll just do my setting real quick, um, uh, and maybe we you, can include a picture. You're so like relaxed. This lo- this, <laughs> dude. So I got this love sack guy. All right, listen. Yes, I know love sacks are expensive. I went into debt for this love sack. It wasn't like I'm loaded with cash. Just write it off. I bought a love sack. I went into debt. Um, so in order to to get more use out of love sack. It's not like we don't sit in a love sack ever, but um, I've been reading all my comics in love sack, dude. You got the natural light coming in through the window. You're, you can see everything's beautifully laid out in front of me, dude. Um, so that's helped a lot too. It's like, just having like, like a nice, comfortable setting to read comics. Question, but, do you like sit down or do you up? have like your feet up, like on your stomach, feet up, like swinging in the back? How do you do it? <laughs> like, swing, like swinging my legs? No, yeah. it's... Do you know what though? That's a good point too, because um, visually, right? Yeah. Pick, paint the picture for me, Christian. Do you hold no, the comic I'm like a, this? No, I'm, I'm on my. Do you desk. hold in the middle? I I put them on my desk. I like to see that spread, and like, I don't know. I feel like my Hurt hands are gonna. Hurt ever or no? I, no, 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 no. I feel like the thing is like I feel like my hands are gonna start sweating and I'm gonna damage the paper. Or like, yeah. for, since I work like at a place where like if the phone rings, I have to like move quickly i cannot like right book down you know it's just plus with op like since i read omnis a lot of the times it's just like you're gonna be holding like a fat stack on each hand and it's just right oh def- definitely i don't I, don't don't get me wrong i'm not I'm, i don't hold up omnis there's no way dude if i tried holding up this superman omni that weighs like i wish i knew how much how much it actually weighed I'm guessing, like I swear five, God, I'm like guessing like five pounds. pounds. I'm guessing like five pounds. It's just like the image of it being so big is like trips you. Cause like just a yeah, like holding it like like a single like a single issue comic book would be Here's crazy. Your wrist I don't wanna be... I don't wanna like oh, yeah. I don't wanna hold it up to my face like a single issue because I don't wanna feel like a villain in like the Pink Panther hiding from the cops, you know? Like Right, like the newspaper yeah, no, sitting on I, the bench or whatever classic <laughs> yeah no, i like i like laying them down sometimes i'll put it like on my lap or like i'll hold it with mm. one hand like like i'm an adult you know but uh yeah, i'm not yeah. a, i'm not a holder i'm not i'm not that type not of holder. guy not a holder dude i i've been doing i wish i had a single a single issue so i could act it out but it's like the you hold the pages open with your pinky oh your yeah thumb. i know that you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So you got like this crazy grip. And then if you've been reading comics for like an hour and a half, your hand is stuck like this. Yeah. I will say, I, uh, just to make this interesting, if I'm reading a like a novel, like an, not like a graphic novel, but like a normal book, I I, I hold those. Because mm. they're normally more like, like smaller. And like if you like lay them down, it's not going to stay flat open. Like Like a manga sort of? Yeah, like a manga or like just like a book, you know, like I'm reading a Stephen yeah. King book. If I try to spread that one on the desk, it's going to collapse on its own. Yeah. That's the good thing about Omnis. They're so heavy that they keep themselves open. I guess yeah. that's a good part. Um, hey, but dude, perfect segue. All right. Um, before we before we move on from this topic, be sure to let us know, guys. Uh, let us know how you read comics. We'll be sure to read your, uh, read your, uh, what the hell is it called? I just lost the word for it. We'll you read your read. stuff next episode, all right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll read your replies in the next episode. Um, do it on Spotify. Do it on uh, yep. you know, YouTube. Yeah. Well, you know what? I might just make a video about how I read comics just to get traction for this episode, tricking everyone to like, oh, they talked about it more. Because, you know, Beautiful, I mean, let's dude. be honest. Everyone wants to hear two 25-year-olds talk about how they read books. I know I do. <laughs> um but listen you mentioned i i asked manga you brought up a book or whatever so that's a, that's the segue it, let's I, talk I, about yeah that was on purpose I, I i knew it nice thank you dude i appreciate you working with me on these segues um let's talk about the dc compact comic book line this just got announced the other day christian doesn't know what the hell i'm talking about so i'm gonna fill you i'm gonna fill everybody in right I, i'm gonna say this before you yeah, start, dude. I think it's pretty stupid just if it's what is in my head. Gotcha. You might think it's stupid. Yeah. Um, so the this is from the DC blog, right? DC announces DC Compact Comics. Uh the the big thing that they put on the very top is 
all of these compact comics are going to be ten dollars, nine ninety nine. Um, and so the interesting part about these compact comics is that they're the same size as a manga, uh, like volume. Okay. So it's that it's that classic uh, five and a half, eight and a half trim size. So it's going to be smaller than your regular trade paperback. Same size about the manga. And they say here in the blog, I don't know if this is true, but it's like the most common format for a book, like just books, period, right? I can see that. And so I guess the 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 idea behind this line is that uh, these are going to be evergreen series, like, you know, one off um, that you don't need to read 800 issues of Batman. You can just get, you know, Batman Hush in the in the DC compact uh, format. Um so I, I guess, you know, before I ask you your thoughts on this format in general, uh, maybe I can just run down the, the list of initial DC Compact comics is not that long. So I'll just run through it real quick. You got Watchmen. Uh, you got Court of Owls. You, you mentioned Scott Snyder and Capullo earlier. You got uh, All-Star Superman. Uh, Far Sector, which is that Green Lantern. Yeah. Um, classic. Wonder Woman Earth One. Uh, so Grant Morrison gets another shout there. Uh, American Vampire book one. So that's the only one um, that yes. says like book one. Okay. So that's interesting. Maybe uh, we got Batman Hush. Like I said, uh, Joker, which is that Brian Azzarello, Lee Bermejo uh, story. So these are some old books. Nothing's... Yeah. They, they... Okay. 100%. So I'll, Gotham. Uh, yep. Keep going. Keep going. No, so just two more. So we got uh, Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens. Uh, that's that Paul Dini one. And then we have Catwoman. Uh, try. Catwoman Trail of Catwoman uh, by Darwin Cook and Ed Brubaker. So that's okay. the initial line. I think it's like, what, 10 or something like that? Um, so yeah, dude, let me know. What do you think? Okay. Like DC I, I was one. after hearing about it, you know, after mm. actually um, hearing the explanation, like, you know, it sounds kind of interesting. I still think it's stupid. Um, and I'll say why it's stupid for me, but why it might work for some other people. Okay. Um, I, I hate new formats, first of all. You know this. I mean, I'm a, I'm a man of, like, structure for some yep. things. Um, it's just, like, it, I like... And, I, and I like, when it comes to, like, comic books, a big part of it is the art, you know? Not saying that manga is not about art, but I like to see that. You know, like, Omni size is perfect. Like, I like yep. seeing every little detail. And, like... You know, with age, I'm I'm gonna need glasses. Like I, I'm already feeling it. You know, they show me like a meme, and I have to do like the <laughs> like putting the phone away, like away from my face to read it. So like the smaller the book, it's like the more annoying for my eyes. And uh, so it's like practical. It's not like I don't like the yeah. look of all these different formats on yeah. my bookshelf. It's like then I'm also practical. Think, like, then I'm also thinking. Well. I'm also thinking, and this is like, uh, but they they signed a contract. They knew it. Um, they're not gonna pay like Lieber Mayho, like, hey, just so you know, we're re- releasing your book. You know, like he got his money already, so that's kind of shitty. I was thinking about that, you know. Yeah. So touching on that, I, yeah, I don't know how the split works. I, I don't know. I mean, it could, it could be that maybe uh, Lieber Mayho gets some, some kickback, well, the some thing royalty, is, like, whatever. As far but... as my understanding of like DC and Marvel goes, it's like you sort of like made your book and you're paid for it by page. As far as yeah. like, whereas like image comics is more like oh you own this you know for sure I yeah I think it um I I saw like um I saw a Frank Miller uh, thread on Twitter yesterday where he kind of talks about the business of it and somewhere in there he mentioned like a like a five percent commission or something like that but it, but your book your your single issue comic has to sell like a certain amount of yeah which is issues like, like it has to hit fifty thousand or something like that yeah. Before Which you a, start making commission. I get it. They made they signed the contract, but it's the same thing as like the the actor strike and the writer strike. It's like, oh, you signed the contract. It's the contract they had. Like they had no other option. You know? Yeah. And like, oh, you want to write Batman? That's like everyone's dream. You got to do it under these rules. And it's like, I guess you know, like they had no other option to be honest. So I think it's it is kind of shitty that like probably they won't get paid anymore. If if I'm wrong, like DC, please correct me. For sure, yeah. Just because we we don't know how the business yeah. of it works, it but it certainly seems fair, like yeah, you know. And yeah. but also, I will say, um, I just like I like I have most like some of those books already, so like I'm not that interested in buying Batman House just in a different size. 
And uh, as far as the positives go, I will say sometimes it's not the most optimal thing to carry a trade paperback in your, you know, your hand or like your little like tote bag, like the tote bag tote Cody has behind him. Well, that tote bag actually like could carry an Omni. That's uh, true. It's the color break tote bag. It can fit everything you want as long as it fits in the bag and does not damage it. Yeah, everything that can fit will fit. Yeah, and and it, <laughs> as long as it does not damage the bag, it'll be great. Um, yeah, I mean, you could damage the bag; it'll still fit. Yeah, in theory. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's some some people don't have a color break tote bag, you know, and uh, sometimes they just have like a backpack or like just their hands and carrying around like Batman Hush in the palm of your hand. That's just flopping. Right, but like a small compact book, I can see that as a benefit, you know. Also, shelf space is gonna be way better. Yeah. Um. So there's benefits to it. I'm not gonna like sit here and just say it's the dumbest business idea anyone's ever had. I think for me, I guess the way I was looking at it, it does stink, you know, as far as like the creator side of it. <laughs> yeah. Because like the first thing that they mention here, and the thing that they're, you know, leading the entire blog post with is like. Watchmen. Watchmen's going to be in this format, and that you know that goes into the whole thing with Alan Moore and and you know his struggles with DC and yeah they keep they keep you know releasing Watchmen and, and you know, Alan Moore hasn't got kicked back from that or whatever. That's yeah, a whole it's, whole thing. Um, it's it, that's the only dumb part I think. Like n- everything else I have as a complaint are just like me being an idiot, but just because I, I'm a dumbass, like I'm not going to say don't buy a book, you know. So I I think for me, right, it's just encouraging in general um, to see DC try something new, I guess. I'm with you in that, oh, another format to keep track of that kind of stinks as like hardcore comic book people. But if you're looking at it from the inside, if someone is only into manga, they go to the bookstore, they pick up all the manga, but they see it, it's kind of the same size. Yeah. And these are marketed, they're being marketed as you don't need to read anything else. Yeah. Anything else? You just pick say, up this Batman Hush. Really good, good Christmas gift for like a non comic book reader. Really good 100%. Christmas gift. Not that a trade wouldn't be a good Christmas gift, but like this feels less threatening, you know? I I think um so something else to, to note. On the covers of each one, on the very top they have like a little label where it says like the genre. Um so that's something that that's I cool. thought was a little interesting. I'm, I'm the thing that interests like mystery, me the most, like talking thriller. to you about it. I want to know the paper quality they're going to use. Yeah, it's interesting because you you figure if they're going for that nine ninety nine that the yeah it, something to note it is in color so that's that's something that um may, maybe you wouldn't think you know it would be in color for that nine ninety nine may, maybe you think it'd be black and white but yeah. um, these are going to be in color and then yeah it's just to be seen if the if the um, paper quality yeah because I uh, I have never seen a book that size with like the the comic book paper quality right yeah we'll definitely have to see and then the other thing too is these are going to be these are coming out in june june of next year so that's like really far away but i'm probably gonna forget about them until they come out for sure absolutely absolutely being, being brutally honest with you i might buy one just like just to buy one you know but I don't have like a specific urge to like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm going to buy. I honestly, if you ask me directly, mind you, my mind could be changed that DC maybe tried to like send me one. Right, right. But right now, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm with you, dude. I had to, to throw to me, in my one of my five curse words per episode. It's just. No, dude, I'm with you, man. I mean, listen, I, I'm a, I'm mostly trying to go for hard, hard covers. So th- this doesn't this doesn't do anything for me, um, and these are already stories. Yeah, like as I was going down the list, I mean, you know, you and I probably have like a handful of them already. So this isn't a line that I'm gonna go and try to collect everything. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to no, no, to bring I, up. I mean, and I'm with you, you know, on that 100. percent The industry's changing. We'll have to see. Maybe maybe Marvel does something similar. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I think that's it for that, right? I was I, think gonna, so. I was gonna tell you I was um as far as like single issues and just size of things I was um not like it depends on how you like move around you right so like for these books um there's you know there's people who just like ride a bike or walk or like when I drive it's easier I can put them on my seat right if it's an yeah. omni I just put it on my seat when I drive and I you know buckle it and like 
it's easy to like to save it. It's not gonna get damaged. But a book that small is better for transportation. For Does sure. Does that make any sense? Like, there's people that ride that. Like, what do they call? I think the two wheels, the, the like the handlebar. Like a like a bike. No, no, the, it's just oh, two. Like, a... like the you're standing up. Oh, like a like a scooter. No, like the Paul Blart one. Oh, like a like a set. Not <laughs> oh, is it literally a Segway? That yeah. might be a Segway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Go on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um listen so yeah definitely uh let us know what you think of the dc compact line of comic books dude let's talk about gone that was a good segue huh that was a pretty good one you can't get any better than actually a segue <laughs> yeah uh so gone by distillery gone is actually well, the first I will official say, series that came out what's up we're, we're gonna like talk about single issues we've been we've really loved in the past okay uh like that's gonna be the topic I think, right? Yeah, so the way I was thinking about it, right, as as Distillery is releasing stuff, yeah, we'll keep our eye on it, right? So this yeah. is going to be a recurring segment. So I would say We're going to be trying to follow Distillery because I think Christian and I are really excited about I, Distillery and everything it. they could be doing. So, um, yeah. so yeah, this will be a recurring segment, a little bit different than in a little bit when we talk about all the single issues that we love. So I was um, going to say, like, we will be talking about more single issues that are not just mm. Distillery and in this particular episode of the pod. But uh, we're going to start with Distillery, which I think, I mean, Cody, you can agree with me. It's one of the most interesting things. I've, like, it's one of the most exciting things, like, month by month. And it's only been two books. 100%. I agree. Um, what did you... So, I know that you were a big fan of this, uh, Gone yeah, by Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I can tell you this, and being totally honest. Um, well, first of all, I want to, like, put this out there. This, If you guys are not reading Distillery, like... I don't know what you guys are doing. They're not paying me to say this. I don't know them, you know? But um this still it's just such a fresh idea to like get it like I would say like the best creators out there right now, you know? Yeah. Just yeah, lot, getting them together and giving ones. them full freedom to do like whatever they want. Um and it's good because like we don't know any of these characters. It's sort of like image comics how it was in the beginning. But it's, right. it feels more free. You know, they're like not following. Like, I feel like Image Comics in the beginning did like superheroes a lot. This is just like whatever they want to do. And that's really like exciting. any any ideas they had brewing for from all these years. Yeah. So yeah. I will say like if if you have a chance, because I know they're not easy to get right now. But if you have a chance to get a distillery book, go ahead. There's only two out. So like you're literally like, what, 20 bucks at the most? Right, because each one is ten, right? Oh, this one's nine. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah, nineteen bucks before yeah. taxes. Um, yeah, uh, I'm really excited for everything they do, and I to start talking about. Do you want to? Do you prefer you start talking about Gone, or do you want me to like? Either way, not nah, Okay, let, so let for rip, Gone man. specifically, it's 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 basically the stowaway from like the, the Devil's Gun, right? With some yeah. changes. That was one of my questions, like, and I, I reread both of them. The stowaway was like the initial idea. Yeah. And then once Jock got the opportunity to make Gone, it's like, okay, I like the initial like essence of the idea. Let me change some things and expand on it. Um, right. And we've so, seen, to me, it's, yeah. to me, it was like um, the stowaway that was featured in the Devil's Cut was kind of like um, m- maybe like a, a short story that yeah. Jock pitched to Distillery. Hey, yeah, I got this idea for the series. Here's kind of like the boilerplate pitch for it, like yeah. the vibe. And the I'll put it like this, just to like maybe this would be a good example for some people. Like a lot of movies start off as a short film, like Bottle right. Rocket by by Wes Anderson. It was a short film, and then it gets picked. Like they sell the short film as like, hey, li- this is what it could be. Yeah. And then like, oh, you can make a two hour version of this with more money. Yeah, with more <laughs> Josh money. Like, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I can make this. You know, actually, let me make some changes to, you know, improve upon it. Like, it was good, but let me improve that on it. That was the because, first draft or the yeah. first try or whatever. Because the yeah. thing is, like, when you have more pages to talk about something, you don't, you can be like, oh, I can actually change this to then expand on that. And uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of the stowaway. I don't remember where I put it on the list. It's not that I wasn't a fan of it. It just didn't catch me that much. I remember you love stowaway, Cody. Yeah, I like the stowaway a lot. And uh, I feel like the big part of that for me and it kind of carries over into this, um, the, the final product, God number one, Yeah, is the art does a lot of heavy lifting for me. Um, 
in my opinion, maybe the dialogue is like the only thing I am not super sold on yet. I just feel like um, the way Jock has been doing the dialogue, at least here, very expositional. Yeah. Um, maybe the characters aren't talking as natural as maybe no, they the, could the way be. I saw They're kind it, of explaining things as, you know, the way to the reader. It, and yeah, like, correct exactly. me if I'm wrong, if, if you disagree with me. The way I saw it, we're following a kid, right? Right. So it, it made sense to me because I was like, kids really do explain every single thing they do. Sometimes. You know what though? It, for me, it wasn't even like it wasn't even the main character's dialogue oh, that like I had a rest. problem with Abby. Yeah, it was almost like just just like you know, let's say Abby like meets a new character, and then like the new character just starts just talking, just talking <laughs> and all sorts. Of, like, okay, you just got introduced into the story. Yeah. Like, so um, I mean, yeah. art. I agree with you. Incredible. Yep. Art was phenomenal. And Very it, much my style. The, Very the, much the, my style. There's a, and I'll put this up on screen if you remind me, Cody, because I'm editing this right after. Uh, there's like a, a, a two page spread where like it's like Abby going through the ship. Yep. I know you're talking about uh, crawling through the vents. It's it's wonderful. I mean, I love yep. it. It was very simple color wise, but like the book itself, but it, it doesn't need more. It's just like, right. yeah, that right there. Oh my God. That's such a good. I love that. Um, yeah, it's cool. That was a cool moment. That that yeah. was something I wanted to highlight too. I thought that was a. I wanted to ask you, Cody. Um, so not that we won't talk more about the book, but I want to ask you something that I think is important when it comes to something like this. You, a lot of times, like for me, it's like I'll read three issues of something to see if I should drop it or not. But I think right. with a book like this, I think it's pretty much like the first one. I'm not gonna right. like. After reading issue number one, and not because you want to see how, if it gets better or not, just like. Are you going to keep pulling? Gut check. Yeah. Gut check. I think that for me, I am going to keep pulling. Yeah. Um, Because for two reasons, really. I think, like we said, I think the art for me is super strong. This is like absolutely my vibe in terms of art. Um, And then two, I kind of like the, you know, I, I, my only negative was really just the dialogue. The actual story itself, like the story beats and Abby is a character and she's really feeling, you know, she wants to take care of her family. Like the story itself is pretty yeah, solid. It's pretty solid. Um, and yeah, to, to me, it's just the dialogue and, you know, maybe that'll improve in the next issue. I don't know. But yeah, um, definitely the art and the story itself. I'm, I'm sold. So. I'm going to put this out there. Yeah. yeah. They changed my mind. Right. Yeah. They changed my mind. Because you were. Because yeah, yeah. not only on like the stowaway, but like the size of the book. Ooh, okay. So you're sold on the premium. Format. Not in general, not for any book, okay. but for right. distillery, I feel like I'm a part of something. And I know I don't know if it sounds stupid, but I like I, owning these books. I'm like, damn, I I have that book. It's super limited. I know it's still super limited to get these books, right? Yeah, it's still it's still you either got to get it through your shop, um, like way ahead of time, like you got to tell your shop, hey, I would like to get this, um, because if your shop has yeah. them, that's the old, that's all they're gonna get. Uh, they don't do like they're, second no, printing no or anything second like printing. that. Uh, so yeah, if it honestly feels like, oh my god, I have this, and I'm a part of like the select group of people that have it, right? So yeah, yeah they I changed my that. mind on the on the prestige format. I'm a that's that's honestly that's kind of huge, dude. Yeah, that's huge because as we all know, distillery all their stuff's gonna be this format, uh, premium size format. So. Christian sold, dude. Yeah, and it, I, I'm telling you right now, it probably won't happen with anything else. Like with distillery, it, it is, but like DC could not be like, hey, we're putting out, you know, like it's like the uniqueness of what distillery is to me is right. is important to the size of the book. It feels like its own thing. So the interesting part, right, is that I'm trying to think of any other. No, nah, it really is just DC um, that yeah. does the premium formats as well. They have uh, a, weird, a lot of times like, they're for the black label. Because, like, for uh, example, stories, like so. Gargoyle of Gotham was not prestige, but it was different. It was square bound. Yeah, yeah. that was the um, that that formats like the uh, the the square bound, um, but it's still like the same trim size yeah, as like it, a trade. It, it was weird. So. Um, I loved it though. Um, Right, because that that's like that's like the uh, the black label will either be yeah usually that square. I, I know. I mean, and I, and I, I haven't read these, format. but I'm gonna say it because like I know you're probably gonna like dream about it after I say it. 
Rogues and then uh, Catwoman. Um, uh, Lonely, Lonely City. Lonely City, Lonely City. Uh, which I know okay. is like your dream thing. I don't know. You you literally like dream about these books every night. I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm a big D. I'm a big fan of the DC Black Label. Yeah. Um, in fact, we might have another segue, guys. <laughs> Do you think we're done talking about yeah. Gone by Jock? Uh, we liked it. I'll we say, liked it, guys. We liked it. Go support the Stillery. Go support Jock. Uh, just be excited. It's a it's a really good initiative. Uh, good to get back to that segue you had, Cody. Yeah, dude. Um, Distillery. Listen, now we're going to be talking about some single issues that Chris and I have been enjoying. Um, for me, I think most of mine, I think all of mine come from October. Um, so yeah. not like on purpose. I think just yeah. I think October was just a banger month yeah. to be October honest. With you. October was a pretty good month. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing I want to highlight is this prestige format DC Black Label series. Yes. Batman City of Madness, book number one, written and drawn by Christian Ward. Dude, I'm a Ward head, man. That Listen. ending? Dude, the ending. <laughs> dude, the ending's sick. I just like that. I mean, should I show it? It's badass, dude. You can show okay. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We're gonna talk about it. Uh, skip to like I don't know whenever. Just like say la 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 until you think we're talking about something different. Oh oh, we're actually getting it. We're gonna spoil. Yeah, like, I mean you it, showed the picture. It? It's a. I did. It's like a octopus Batman. Yeah. So um. <laughs> so Christian Christian Ward is big into like cosmic horror. Like if you follow him on. Yeah, it, um, it sort of felt like like the Lovecraftian like horror. 100%. That's definitely the uh because you know Christian Ward uh he did the art for Aquaman Andromeda which I've heard DC was Black incredible Hole series. Really good. And that had a lot of um cosmic horror elements as well. So that's definitely something I, that I a Christian likes that to I want to draw. Pick that up now. God. It's a good one. It's a good I, one. I, I hope they have it at my shop. Um but the so the thing that I love so much about Batman City oh. Madness I mean obviously Christian's artwork I think it's spectacular. His color choices, dude. I just love how I love, vibrant. It's so uh, simple too. Like it's it's right. mainly purple, blue, and red. Mainly. And the story has me so hooked, it's, dude. It's so, so good. We got the we got the uh, we got the Corda Owls are somehow involved. Yes. Underneath Gotham is like an evil negative Gotham. Yes. Like a so like that's gonna be crazy. Um, I, when book two, comes I mean, out. I don't want to like keep talking about this book because there's only one thing I really <laughs> have to say, uh, and it's like I'm gonna say this with all the love in the world. I hate you, Cody. Like I really, <laughs> really hate you, because like, and I'll put this. I, I I'm not like out here like dying, you know. Like I, I of course, I'm conscious about like my spending, uh, but every fucking time, and that's my second curse. Every fucking time, <laughs> I guess that's three now. I, I like Cody's like, hey, read this book. I'm like, God, I know it's gonna be good. And like, it's, it's, you're my friend. You know me. You wouldn't recommend me anything I wouldn't like. But it's like, I knew I was gonna pick it up. Be- and I picked it up, not because I wanted to, but because I thought you would recommend it to me after reading it. 100%. Because I, I know that the premium formats aren't like your thing, but I'm like, Dude, Christian would probably like it. And the thing is, like, I bought it and, like, I bought it knowing you were going to recommend it to me. And then the next day, you were like, dude. (laughs) City of Madness, dude. Uh, I Um, hate you for it. um, But I'm happy. Like, I'm really happy. Um, Dude, listen, I just got to say, man, like, so you brought it up a little bit before uh, the Gargoyle of Gotham, City of Madness, dude. Listen, all the DC Black Level stuff slams, man. Yeah. All the DC Black Level stuff slams. And there's some people that are just like, we, I'm not reading we that. We got nice house on the lake out there. If you would need better, what more do you need to say, yeah. bro? What more do you need to say? I mean, if you need better proof about just DC Black Label being a banger, nice house on the lake is from there. Yeah, man. Yeah, like um, for Christmas, my parents like asked me to make a list of things I want, and I just I put a nice house on the lake T-shirt that I really really want. Which you oh, it's like like off t- uh, Tinian's like shop or yeah, something like that. Yeah, look for it afterwards, Cody, because I know you'll buy it too. Yeah, I got I got paid today. Maybe it's only I'll like be... twenty bucks, which is not that bad. We get no Dude, money from this, but like it's si- pretty similar sick. to that. I, I want to say too, uh, similar to that, the nice house on the lake uh, Tinian shirt. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson just updated his merch store 
And he's got like a do a power bomb shirt, and I'm like, dude, that thing slammed. That thing is sick. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm gonna look it up right now. Keep talking. Yeah, so I gotta be. I gotta pick up this nice house of lake shirt. Okay. I'm gonna. This, I'm gonna mention a book a I want to talk shirt. about while I look up this shirt. Be- yeah, yeah. Literally because I know you can. Ra- you can like go on about it. Um, okay. Yeah. My yeah, next book is uh, beneath the trees where no one sees. Yep. So beneath the trees where no one sees. I had this on deck, dude. <laughs> One of the craziest reads of like recent memory. Okay, so this is an IDW original. Um, you guys can see here the cover. Doesn't that look cute, guys? But yeah. what's that in the bag? What's that? It looks like a dead body, guys. Uh, so you got this anthropomorphic uh, bear living in this small town. This bear is a serial killer, guys. It, um, it gets yeah. pretty graphic. It's It was kind of gross almost, like how graphic it was. By the way, the t-shirt's um, sick. Um, yes yes dude it is uh it is pretty graphic like it yeah first of like all, it's it's it like surprised me how graphic it was it, it's it's beautifully drawn right like, i mean this might be the book i was the most excited to talk about yep this might just i, I, I figured the, the art would be up, right up your alley for it, sure it was one and you know what it's funny i didn't like i texted you about it before it even came out and like the reason right. why I texted you about it, maybe I even sent it to you on Twitter, was because I saw the artist for the book or like the writer tweet about it, like, "Hey, our book's coming out next month," and I was like, "Oh, that's sick!" You know, like that looks like a really like interesting book. Let me send Cody this this book, and then to actually read it, God, man, it's so good. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I- it's it's interesting to see, especially with the cliffhanger ending. It's you know there might be another serial killer in this town. Yeah, so like, it's, it's that's where it ends. So sick. I mean, like for me, it was one, and I'm getting really excited about this topic. For me, it was one of those, uh, yeah. Look, I September 29th, I saw this tweet, um, like just talking about the book being released, and I was like, oh, this looks the, kind of interesting. The art. So I guess it's uh, Horvath. I've never never heard of Horvath. I'm not sure yeah. what other series horvath has worked on but uh horvath right patrick horvath, horvath yeah. drawing so it's it's a beautiful book it's, i mean it, it looks like a storybook for like children and it's like it's so good honestly that's, so that color yeah. breakies look you know i'm gonna be talking about it oh yeah i, I don't doubt it dude it's it's beneath the trees where nobody sees if you're like looking for like a new indie series only one issue in i it's so good. That was like a 10 out of 10 book for me. Like at first, it, and the reason why is like knowing that it is kind of like horror, it, yep. it starts off so nice. It's like sweet almost, and right? Was, You're like, I'm, I'm like, wait, it, who's the it, serial killer? It got I don't me even so know. hooked immediately because I was like, I know some fucked up shit is going to come up. And, and dude, it happened. It's so good. It's great, guys. Definitely check out Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Just like a super interesting concept. I mean, right from the start, you know what yeah, I mean? Like it's, it's well executed. You got uh ha- you got a uh, Hassan Atman Alehu on the letters. Also, I think he did the letters for Batman City of Madness. It's so yeah, good. He did. <laughs> it's so it's good. Around, I don't know man. what else to say. It's such a dope book. Dude, I'm gonna give you the chance to to wax poetically about another comic. Ready? Okay. I know you're gonna be talking about this one. We got Dracula. Dracula number one. <laughs> Tell me all about it, Christian. Tell me about it, dude. Okay, I will say, love. Get it. on your soapbox, dude. Loved it, dude. Lo- okay. I mean, it's James uh, Tinian or Tinian. I I feel so bad if one day I meet him, I'm gonna be apologize for like mispronouncing his name a million times. Also on Distillery, um, dude, it's it's Universal Monsters. I always say like Universal Monsters, like the posters for Universal Monsters are so unique, and like the old movies. And like to have a writer so good, I mean as good as James Tynion in the fourth, just writing Dracula, and it's like not a lot happens. No, very. It's it's honestly all about the psyche of Renfield. Yep. And Renfield, for people who don't know, it's Dracula's like helper. Um, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot what the um, like a familiar is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, familiar. Dude, what a what a banger of a book you know what it's it's funny because like it's not that i forgot it existed i just like put it off my mind 
Yep. Because I was like thinking of like what other like I was like okay James Tenney is like a banger of course I'm going to talk about it what else do I need to think about and I stopped thinking about it but as soon as you saw you showed me the cover it's like all my thoughts it came just to clicks my mind. again. First of Dude. all, art. Do I need to say more? It's it's Martin Simmons baby yeah. Martin Simmons. Who we've seen we've seen this duo before. I know, dude. I, and it's funny because I, I just I just had finished uh, Department of Truth. Yeah, which like one. I'm in the second Department of Truth trade, and it's one of my favorite series of all time. It's yep. every p every page in Dracula, Universal Monster Dracula, is a work I would hang up. If you just handed me like each page individually, I would hang it up on my wall. It's it's I'm with you, dude. it's that good. Uh, the thing that um really kind of drove it home for me. So obviously I think it's an excellent first issue, knocked it out of the park. That letter at the end where um, Tinian's explaining like his love for Dracula. It's like, he's like, this is like the perfect project for me guys. Yeah. Um, he just, you can really tell that like, yeah. like he said, I think he literally says it in there. Like Dracula's in his bones. I need him I mean? to so do I'm, the I'm other so ones. Looking forward. I need him to do other universal monsters. Yeah, I, so I know that Skybound just got the license to them. I don't think they've solicited any other series, but I'm interested to see. I mean, because like, you know, you got I need him to do Frankenstein. Or... I need him to do the Invisible Man. I need. I don't know if Tinian will be doing all those. They might. They might pull in some. I know writers, he might but... not, but I think he should. <laughs> to me, I'll be honest with you. I think maybe he shouldn't because. I mean, the man's busy, right? Th- like... This man doesn't know burnout. That's that's. Hear, I... hear about this. How about this? If t- if he wants to, if he wants to do Frankenstein, Invisible Man, all that other werewolf, go for it, dude. Go for it, but don't do it unless it um like, unless you can balance World here. Tree. Uh, nice House on Lakes coming back. Don't forget about that, Tinian. <laughs> Something's killing children, still going strong. Like, I mean, World Tree. I think I already said that. Yeah. You just go down the list. He's a busy guy, so hopefully, I hope he doesn't burn himself out and. I take just, on too many projects, it's, but it's it was Dracula was so good. Also, I think that he said that after he finishes Dracula, he's going back to Department of Truth. So, um, so yeah, it, Th- this was like this is like the project that kind of uh, you know, like a fret brush of yeah, you know, what I'm talking about it, for Martin Simmons. You know, and him, I will say um, this, I will say it, this, so. um, yeah. and I know there's a lot of like you know, like fan being a fan is like scary, you know, like when you have a fan and like. I mean, there's some crazy people out there. I think, like, my thing, like, if you ask me, like, what's a writer you want to meet, it's him. For sure. But it's not even, like, a celebrity thing. Like, if I'm being totally honest, as a creator, like, somewhere to study film and, like, I write my own things, the the sheer amount of respect I have for that, man. Because yeah, it's just respect. Just... It's... It's just quality. It's just quality it's, after quality it's after just quality. Quality work and and no letdowns. I haven't read something that like I, mean, I have my least favorite, but it does. It's still like a great book that I keep. Like World Tree is like in my list of like my least favorites right now. But my least favorite Tinian book is still over like all of Marvel right now. It's still like a nine five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's still like a nine like three at the lowest it's, you know it's, it's just like the respect i have for someone who can consistently put out work like that it's incredible it's honestly like it's, it's just so good yeah i don't know what else to say this, this man is probably the greatest writer at the uh, alive at the moment like as far as comic book go he's probably like the biggest comic book rock star right now because if his name's attached it's it's gonna sell out it's gonna, gonna need a second it. printing yeah everybody's gonna be buying it um, even just from like a spec, like a spec, like yeah. a speculation type of thing, like people looking to flip it because they know Tinian's yeah. got the name, name 100%. recognition. But, um, but dude, let's let's move on from Dracula's, uh, from Dracula and talk about. Tell me about Transformers. Yeah, dude. you brought it up a little bit before. We can do issue number one. I mean, no, we'll yeah. do. Both. I, I haven't read issue number two. Oh, I, two I was yet, gonna say something so. really interesting. Uh. Yeah, not I, I. I've heard of uh, maybe something that happens in issue two, but I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, my plan is to uh, do a big binge read tomorrow. Oh, so nice! Get down. Yeah, yeah. I got Veterans Day off, dude. So. Oh, really nice then. Yeah, I'll be reading the shit done tomorrow. Um, dude. But yeah, tell me about Transformers One, my man. I mean, I'll say this: amazing series, 
loved it. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna say it's like my most anticipated read of the, like or like that. I, I'm loving it, but it's not like one of those books that I'm like, oh my god, you know, like it's just like curiosity mainly. But it's still like gotcha. a ten out of ten book for me. Um, I think it's been a whole month, so we can talk about issue number one. I'm gonna say spoilers so, yeah. right now, but like, yeah, we're gonna spoil the book for you. They killed. You still read it though. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But spoilers incoming. One, two, three. They killed Bumblebee, man. They did. That, I'm interested to see. That was you. wild. Honestly, like I feel like Bumblebee's a fan favorite, so they, I'm interested to they see. Might they might bring him back, but I don't need them yeah. to bring him back. Right. It's something like right from the start that set this universe uh, up differently. Yeah. Not that I'm a Transformers expert, but I know that Bumblebee is like a staple yeah. character. So him I, I not feel being like, there, I mean, as far as yeah. I know, Bumblebee and like I talked to Brian, who works in my comic book shop. Bumblebee has always been there. He wasn't like the biggest Transformer until the right. Michael Bay movies. The movie probably really yeah. nailed that home. Yeah. But uh, but honestly, like it's it's a fresh start from issue number one like you literally they they just arrived on earth or like they just awoke on earth and it, yeah. it's nice because it really it's not like oh what do i have to read before there's nothing you have to read before I'm, it's it's okay it's you have to read void rivals before but like you might not even have to, to be honest i, with I you, will you know say this mean? because like void rivals is so new like what issue number six just came out or five yeah i think five um, yep Read Void Rivals because, and and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say what happens on issue number two, but the Energon universe is really like it feels really intertwined. Yeah, and uh, Void Rivals is so new that you could honestly just buy all of it because I think it's gonna be, a, like, they're gonna connect them all, like not just like for an event, but like in general. I feel like it's, I think so too. It's not gonna be like oh they did like whatever fuck like crisis on like two words i don't know no it's gonna be like th- this is like not like a limited event they're gonna be connected forever that's how i see it yeah they seem to be um and, and i think that helps right because you have robert kirkman at the helm yeah kind of acting like a showrunner yeah. almost and we, i mean we we got our and i'm not gonna say what it is but we got our first uh, gi uh, gi joe connection yeah that's what i heard i heard that was in uh, transformers too yeah dude the thing for me though in transformers well one i in two i haven't read it but Danny Warren Johnson, man. Incredible. I mean... So incredible. What, what can you even say about it? I mean, the action sequences are great. Just like even his style, he still is able to show like really uh, really powerful emotions. And they, I will say, mainly in issue number two, but in issue number one, they, they're brutal. They don't hold back. Dude, the, the action sequence... It's, this... it's always interesting to see how... Um, like, I, I couldn't... I couldn't really think about it in my mind how Daniel Warren Johnson's art would kind of translate to Transformers, like, you know, giant robots, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, dude, it's it's he it kills it. It still has the sense of um, almost like elasticity. Like, yeah. the, the proportions might change, like, when they're in a the fight or whatever, yeah. but it makes sense within the story. Um, so I don't know, dude. Daniel Warren Johnson say, is doing this great is like stuff. The big, like, this is not a book for kids. Yeah, not really. You know, not, it's not really. not for kids. Um, Void Rivals, this one, Transformers 2, they're not for kids. And I think that's great. Because I feel like this was made for Transformers fans. Like, this was made right. for the true fan. I have a friend uh, who used to work with me. And uh, I I bought it. Like, I was like, honestly, I was like, she needs to read this. You know? And, like, she yep. was like, this is the best. You know, like, she loved it. And, uh. I think that's a good thing. I mean, it's just such a nice book, man. I could, I could talk about yeah, it for dude. hours, honestly. It made me rewatch the movies, which like kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie Interesting. To yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's an interesting choice, dude. Um, but yeah, man, listen. We're just excited for Energon stuff here, guys. Honestly, I don't know if you guys yeah. could tell. I, I, I thought I wasn't going to be excited for G.I. Joe. Yep. But I, but this guy, like issue two yeah, got you excited I mean, for... It, it, it's not a lot. But it was enough for me to be like, okay, this this is yeah. gonna be connected. I'm gonna be reading it. You know what's interesting? The last thing I'll say on um, like Energon's Transformer type stuff is, for me, I kind of feel about it um, maybe the same way that you feel about Distillery, where it just like at the ground floor, it just feels yeah. super exciting to. No, no um, I'm with you on that. Uh, I think that yeah, like even more so for me, I guess, like in terms of the Energon stuff, 
it's just super cool, man. Like I'm, I'm not a Transformers guy. I'm not a G.I. Joe guy, but I'm here for it, man. Uh, I'll be, I'll be getting them. Even, even Joshua Williams is writing them guys and I'm still going to pull them. So that's, that's big for Cody. Listen, distillery changed my mind about a premium format. (laughs) Energon universe changed Cody's mind about Joshua Williamson. Well, you know, it's funny, dude. I give Joshua Williamson a lot of crap, but, um, Recently, he's been killing it. I mean, yeah. the Batman and Robin series is actually pretty good. The Superman series, uh, seven issues in, is pretty good. So now, at this point, I think he's written more hits for me than misses. Which, so by the way, you were going to drop Superman. I was going to drop it, like issue three. And I'm like, you know what? This is actually kind of slamming. It's kind of good. <laughs> it's just fun. Yeah. Um, dude, I don't know. How many How many more uh, I, single issues I, you got? Honestly, I'm good. You have anything? Good? Any... I'll do one more, okay, dude. Yeah, go, I'll do go one ahead. more. So this is a series that I don't know if it would be for everybody, but I picked it up. It's called Hack Slash Back to School. Um, this is Zoe Thorogood doing yes. the art and the writing. I love Zoe Thorogood. I I had yep. the book. I haven't read it. Oh, you, you picked up I, no, you picked I, up Hack I, Slash I, Back to School. I see her name. Yeah. I have to pick it up. Yeah. So um, I'm not familiar with the Hack Slash universe. I guess it's like 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 in, in a movie like the. Like, killer movies like yeah. scream or whatever you got ghost face i guess these are hunters that hunt yeah like movie monster serial killer type of thing i'm not too up to date with all the I hack do know, slash like, stuff and just before Curtis, you don't have to read yeah, yeah. anything else hack hack slash to read this one right exactly so that's kind of where i was going i didn't know anything about hack slash but just getting into this um zoe's artwork fantastic you guys already know that she has such a such a style that i, mean, I wish i could i literally picked it up because it's lonely at the center of the earth made me cry like a baby right and i know it's a totally different i don't expect to cry because of this and i won't cry yeah I, like i'm not on cry at everything come on but uh it's totally <laughs> at the center of the earth just showed how good she is at, like telling a story absolutely dude because she's great um, so the, this story to be honest with you guys i forgot the main character's name but all the characters just hot. They're just hot girls. They're just they're just hot badass women just killing stuff. Um, the main character joins like this academy. They're being trained to be, you know, to go out and hunt these uh, serial killers or whatever. Um, it's just it's just a solid series so far. Uh, Zoe Zoe's just killing it. Yeah, just like you, man. Just because I see her name, you got to pick it yeah, up. Yeah, honestly, that's so. how I'm gonna do it from now on. If I see her name, I'm picking it up she's also uh she's also like really a really funny writer yeah um all the different characters she has all the different characters she uh has here they're all very unique there's this one dude who i don't and i don't know what his deal is but he's like he's the only male character you can see him there he's got like a gas mask and he's just like this big giant like dumb guy who's like messing up all his like phrases and stuff like that I don't know. Zoe's got a really it's, it's uh, nice to see, charming way she writes. It's nice to see you this excited about a book, Cody. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if it'd be for everybody, but I'm picking it up. Zoe's on it, and um, I might have to go back and read some hack slash, yeah. though. That's for sure. I feel you. But, I mean, that's that's. I forgot that book came out, and I have it on my desk at work, so I'm glad you brought it up. Check it out, man. No, I'm going to read it tomorrow. No, yeah, yeah. Let me know what you um, think. I think we're we're nearing the end of this episode, so I want to ask Cody. For sure. Before you go, just tell me one book. One book. One book you're excited about. This like we're reaching the end of the year. One book you're excited about. Like coming out for the rest of the year. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me let me do this real quick. So I know that. Um, so I, I gotta I gotta film this video. I'll probably film it tomorrow. Yeah. But there's a lot of uh, new series that are coming out. Yes. Um, so I think a highlight from me. We talked about James Tinney in the fourth earlier. He's got this new series uh, called The Deviant. Oh, I did not. Know and this. Uh, it's a it's a Christmas story, but it's like a serial killer type of thing. Okay. Um, and it looks kind of scary. That, I'm excited. I mean, you said his There's name. There's a deviant killer. It's around Christmas time. You said his name. And you got need, James Tinney. I don't the need more, man. Yeah, dude. So I don't know if you j- just off like the cover. Yeah. Just the cover alone. I'm like. Oh yeah, no, I don't need to think about it anymore. Um, yeah. So that that's a that's a standout for me coming out, and that comes out um, November fifteenth. So I need to right in time for Christmas. What's it called? I'm trying to see. 
Uh, there's a new distillery. Like for me, if you ask me, like what the name Somna is that what you're talking about? Somna, the new distillery. And uh, yeah, Somna. That's it. That's the what I'm excited about. Yep. And then Blast Famous, that comes out in December. That's the other series. Blast. That, uh, Blast. Oh, that's the um, that's the, the uh, Merca and Dolfo. Mer- Merca yeah. and Dolfo. Yep. That one looks really fun. Uh, those are my two. I mean, Distillery are my two most anticipated books of the year. Yeah, man. That's all I got to say. Makes sense, dude. For good reason. I mean, for good reason. reason. We'll be checking them out. We'll be covering them here for on, uh, and it makes, on Color Breaks. It makes Break, me so. question. Like, I have, uh, they're not doing monthly releases, right? Not monthly, no. Yeah, it seem, it's interesting their release because it's like one per month, like one yeah. of the series yeah. a month. Because I, I th- uh, like I don't know when Gone Two comes I, out. I'm yeah, not sure. Maybe January because I know maybe. Blast Famous comes out December. But right. uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's where I want to end it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we have talked about some very. I like to describe this episode as a whole lot of nothing, but a lot, you know, it's it's a hodgepodge. It's a yeah. um, a hodgepodge. It's a uh, potpourri. You guys a know potpourri? potpourri. Of thoughts. It's a potpourri of yes. thoughts that we needed to get out, but we're, I'm so happy we did it because sometimes you just need a relax one, dude. Yeah, guys, listen. Nice, chill, relax. Just me and Christian on this one. Um, listen, we got a lot of uh, the strikes over, so Movie yeah. Boys will be coming back with Ivan. I think we're going to be doing something for the Marvels, um, M- yeah, maybe. which comes out tomorrow. I'm gonna be seeing it, so if these no, guys I'll, see it, I'll we'll say be doing like, some I'm saying maybe boys. because just like it comes out, so like we released that episode two weeks after the movie comes out. So yeah, may, maybe we do. Uh, we can talk about this after, but maybe it'd be like a one-off yeah. episode or something yeah. like that on the Color Break YouTube, yeah. uh, which you should all subscribe. Find the link to that down in the description. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we yeah. we should end it just by saying, uh, Cody, anything you want to promote? That's you know. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. This is number 32, Color yeah. Break, your third favorite comic book podcast. Be sure to give us a rating, man. Yeah. That helps out a lot. Spotify. Hit that thumbs up on YouTube if you guys want. Um, yeah. And be sure to answer our questions because we'll be uh, getting to those in the next episode. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for me, so. uh, go check out our YouTube, like our dedicated Color Break YouTube, which I will. I personally even know I'm editing a video for that right now. And I know Cody has some ideas for that. Go check out our merch yeah. if you care about clothes. You know, if like yeah, look at that hat, dude. That's yeah, a the, nice hat. Well, this one's not for sale anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's cool. They disappear. So like, if you want what's there right now, you got a limited amount of time, buddy. Um, no, what I will say, it's um, it helps us, of course, and uh, it's a fun mm. project for me, honestly. I mean, like, listen, December's coming up, and we have a sweater in that shop. Just saying. Yeah, I guess cool. True. C2E2 is coming up, guys. Yeah. We're looking to go to C2E2. We're looking to go to so, C2E2. Uh, this would help us go. That's true. Might have a panel for C2E2. I don't want to spoil anything, guys, but yeah. working on a panel should be a lot of fun. And a lot of cool stuff coming. Hey, listen, me and Cody will talk about this. Guys, I will say uh, thank you. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you, you for as listening. always. Cody, thank you for your time. Uh, you're a good friend of mine. And uh, course, buddy. yeah, go go home. It's over. No. Get out of here. Get out of here, guys.